Our series on marine electrical systems rolls on with our guru, Don Ely, as he describes different kinds of wire and helps us to understand which ones to use for our own projects. It seems that wiring on board is really one of the biggest challenges that we have. We've got corrosion problems, uh, we've got vibration and uh, things like that that really uh, challenge the whole wiring system on board. So today what we're going to do first off is look at some different types of wire and believe it or not there are three different types. This is actually called type 1 and you might be familiar with this. It's Romex or household wiring. It's single conductor. This happens to be the ground but single wire, solid core and this is not appropriate for marine use. And the reason is the wire itself being single strand like this during vibration will break and then we'd have a bad connection. So we don't use a single strand wire type one wire on board a vessel. In fact, both the Coast Guard and the American Boat and Yacht Council prohibit the use of type one wire. So that's not appropriate. Type two wire, typical automotive wire, it's multiple strands and it's appropriate for marine use. It has a few challenges. One is it's not as vibration resistant as uh, other uh, type 3 wire that we're going to look at here in a minute. And it also is uh, just straight copper. It doesn't have any tin coating, so there's no corrosion inhibiting factor to this wire. It is appropriate for marine use when we don't have high vibration. Type 3, uh, you'll see, has actually even more strands. And this is uh, what I consider most appropriate for marine use. Uh, it can handle high vibration. Um, it's also the copper is tin coated so that inhibits any corrosion that we might have on the on the copper so we get a better connection because of that. So uh, type 3 wire is what we're going to be uh, using today in all of the connections that we're making um, uh, because of the superior uh, performance I guess in a marine environment. Alright so now we want to look at uh, wire gauge which is actually the circular area of the surface of the the cross-sectional area of the of the wire itself. So we're looking at uh, again type 3 wire. This happens to be 10 gauge wire and it will actually uh, tell us that on the on the wire itself that it's 10 AWG that's American wire gauge that's a standard for measuring that uh, cross-sectional area of the wire. And again notice this is multi-strand uh, and tinned um, so it prevents corrosion. So that's uh, type 3 uh, 10 gauge. In, in, in this particular case I have a red and a yellow and this is the convention now for uh, low voltage DC. So 12 and 24 volt DC we're going to be using red for the positive side and yellow for the negative side. And that allows us to um, avoid any confusion that we might have with a high voltage 120 volt shore power or generator uh, uh, power that we, we use uh, red and black and white uh, in those conventions. So DC low voltage we're going to be using red for the positive, yellow for the negative. So that's 10 gauge. Um, as the number goes up we're going to actually get it to smaller diameter wire. So this one here is a little bit smaller. This is uh, 12 gauge. It'll be a little bit smaller than a 10. This was our uh, 14, both type 2 and type 3 uh, 14 gauge. We continue to get smaller here. Uh, this is 16 gauge which is pretty much the smallest that you typically see on board a vessel. And then uh, the smallest one we have here is 18 gauge. So again as the, as the number gets larger that cross-sectional area uh, actually gets smaller so the wire is smaller. Now the wire gauge uh, that we're going to use is a function of the amperage or the current flow, the rate of, of electricity flowing through the wire. So the greater the rate of flow, uh, the, the higher the current flow, the larger the diameter we want but of course that's a smaller gauge wire. One other thing we should look at is some of the uh, information that's available right on the wire insulation itself. In this particular case uh, we've got the manufacturer's name, uh, we've got 10 AWG so that's 10 American wire gauge so it meets their standards. Um, UL is Underwriters Laboratory Boat Cable. Uh, that means it's meeting 
underwriter laboratory standards for boat cable, which happen to be type 3, which is the one with multiple strands, and tinned copper. So that uh, meets their standards. The insulation is rated for 600 volts. We've been using this in a 12 volt system. It's just telling us that the insula insulation itself has that capability. Uh, 105 degrees Celsius uh, dry and 75 degrees Celsius wet. Those are conditions that the uh, wire it itself and the insulation can withstand and still be in a safe mode. Uh, it's oil resistant. Um, and then there's some, uh, another list of numbers here that meeting some other standards. But this gives us uh, some great information right on the uh, surface of the insulation. All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, electricity and this kind of relationship between voltage, uh, amperage, and resistance. And I think most of you are familiar with Ohm's law, which uh, states that voltage V is going to equal um, amperage times resistance. And we can rewrite that a couple of different ways fairly easily. Amperage, which happens to be uh, the rate of flow of electrons through the wire, is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Um, and then lastly, we can uh, look at Ohm's law uh, another way, which is the resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the amperage. And this gives us this relationship between voltage, which is the electrical pressure, amperage, which is the rate of flow of electrons through the wire, and resistance of, of either the wire itself or some device that's, uh, that's in that circuit. So if we have a battery, typically it's a 12 volt battery, we're going to have a positive uh, terminal and a negative terminal. And we're going to have some load over here. We're going to call this our load. And typically we're going to run a wire with a switch to our load and then from our load back to our battery to the negative side. Typically we switch things on the positive side of the circuit and if we close this switch then electricity is going to flow from our battery through our load that could be a bilge pump or a fan or a GPS whatever and then back to our battery and we need this complete circuit for this uh, electricity to flow. So when we're determining wire size or wire gauge, we need to know several things. One, we need to know the battery voltage. We need to know uh, the length of run that this electricity is going to take from the battery to the load and all the way back to the battery, that total length of run there. And we're also going to need to know the amperage, how much amperage this actual particular load is going to draw. And that's going to be a function of the um, resistance also in this entire circuit. So the next thing we're going to do then is we'll go to a table and determine what gauge wire we should be using for this particular circuit based on this amperage, based on this voltage, and based on this length of run that we have here with the, in the entire circuit. All right, so the next step then is to determine what wire gauge is appropriate for uh, the particular load that we have in the circuit. And so one source of that information is the uh, American Boat and Yacht Council Standards and Technical Information Reports for Small Craft. And if we go to section E11 of this, um, this publication, we actually find a, a table here that's going to talk about uh, or demonstrate anyways this relationship between voltage, amperage, and length of run and then from that table we'll be able to determine our wire gauge. So for example in the circuit that we were just looking at uh, this happens to be the 12 volt 3 percent voltage drop uh, wire gauge table that we'll be using. Um, if it draws 5 amps and we have a total run of, let's just say, 40 feet, so 20 feet from the battery to the device, let's say the bilge pump, and back again. So we, if it draws 5 amps, the total run is 40 feet. It's telling us we should be using 10 gauge wire for that particular application. So that's how we use uh, the ABYC table for determining a wire gauge based on voltage, amperage, and the length of run of the particular circuit. So the uh, ABYC table is divided into uh, 12, 24, and 32 volts 
This is what we consider low voltage uh, DC direct current. This is what would be uh, used in a battery um, situation on a boat. And I imagine you can find this uh, online uh, fairly easily also. This is uh, some pretty basic information that's available. So we've gotten you through the basics of wire of all sizes and electricity. Our next installment, we'll get into making good solid connections with them. See you then.